mortality death rates in uh, uh, women, pregnant women, but in California in 2005, the mortality rate was actually 11 women per 100,000. Now, California, from 1996 to 2006, the maternal mortality rate in 10 years tripled from 5.6 to 16.9 per 100,000. And what are the causes? Morbid obesity. There are more and more morbidly obese women now uh, delivering babies, and they are really a problem. Also, uh, the medical profession is saying uh, aging mothers, hypertension, diabetes, Hemorrhaging from cesarean sections is also increasing, and that's uh, particularly high in obese mothers. So um, you could say that all of these illnesses that I just named actually are radiation-related illnesses. So as the radiation levels increase globally, and I have uh, the depleted uranium levels that I graphed in Los Angeles drinking water, you can see every battle in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan uh, increased the levels in that particular year in, in Los Angeles drinking water. And I have a family who gave me their hair tests. They have sky-high uh, levels of uranium in their hair. So um, it's really uh, it's a disaster all over the world, and hardly anybody even knows it. Um, uh, in Australia, obesity in pregnant women increased um, from 30 a year in 2008 uh, from 1 to 2 in 2003. So in five years, obese pregnant women increased from 1 or 2 in a year in 2003 to 30 in a year in 2008, and that's increasing all the time. And the U.S. and Australia are testing depleted uranium and other exotic weapons all over Australia because the Australian government turned over their military bases to the United States in 2003. And that's just when the increase in obese pregnant women started. So the uranium is affecting already the Australian population. And in, the, in Australia and the U.S., the cesarean sections are the highest in the world, with 30.9% of births uh, occurring through cesarean sections. That, that was 2007. And in Australia, gestational diabetes increased 20% between 2001 and 2006. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up and reporting on this is because these are what we can expect now very severely to increase in Japan and in North America. So um, uh, the very last thing I wanted to talk about <coughs> with uh, the effects of radiation on uh, maternity is that there's a global decrease in the sex ratio of the number of boys born per 100 girls. And that is something that is per very it, high it, it, in it, it, radiation contaminated areas. And the UN and the WHO and the CIA are hiding this statistic more than any others. Yes, Alfred. Now, is that boys per 1,000 girls or boys per 100 No, girls? it's boys per 100 girls. Oh, oh. Okay, good. Now, um, I guess the main question that I have on this section is this. If we take, for example, the uh, case of Australia, where immediately following the U.S. beginning to uh, use uh, depleted uranium weapons there for training purposes, allegedly, uh, oh, uh, obesity in pregnant women increased almost 30-fold. Uh, we now have the highest, along with the U.S., C-section rate in, in the world, and gestational diabetes increased 
Um, is it your professional opinion that the uh, U.S. military was doing that for a military training purposes or for purposes of depopulating the Australian population? Oh, it's um, it's uh, multi-purpose. Uh, they're depopulating in particular areas that they want to carry out future uh, mammoth mining projects. And Australia is a treasure box of minerals, including uh, very large uh, amounts of uranium deposits in Australia. So um, basically, with this HARP program, uh, the the highest targeted areas for mining are Haiti, the Haiti region, Caribbean, um, tr uh, Norway, northern Norway. Uh, that's probably for oil and gas and and other minerals like iron. And uh, all of northern Turkey, from the Mediterranean or Europe all the way to uh, the border with Iran, that uh, has a lot of gold deposits there. And um, then um, uh, the Tian Shan Gold Belt, which is in Tajikistan and extends into China and uh, Indonesia. And there are heart facilities at every one of those locations. And there have been large increases in earthquakes, uh, just like in Japan since 1965. And in Japan, they had a 7,070% increase in earthquakes, major earthquakes, six or above, magnitude six or higher, um, after 1965, as compared to the 70-year period before that. Right. Now, uh, we, we have about... And so what they want to do, they want to depopulate these regions where they want to go in and mine. So, yes, right. the, uh, the use of depleted uranium, absolutely, the agenda for using depleted uranium is depopulation. Thank you. We have about 20 minutes uh, remaining in the segment, and I know that we have a lot of uh, material uh, to cover I know that you wanted to uh, talk about the Japan radiation contamination maps. Yes. Um, there's a very, very excellent map. It's a radiation contamination route map, which uh, Professor Yukio Hayakawa made. He's from Genma University. And uh, he made an excellent map that shows uh, where the the roots that the radiation took, and it has certainly contaminated the whole top third of Japan to such a level that the entire region should be evacuated, Alfred. Um, and it's making its way now down into the Tokyo area, and very soon uh, Tokyo will be uninhabitable. There are hot spots all over Tokyo that as high as Chernobyl. Well, uh, Tokyo is in the macrocephalic kind of uh, uh, category, and that means cities that are that uh, uh, contain uh, disproportionate amounts of the Japanese population. Uh, so, where would all those people go? Well, there's 30 million people, 35 million people in, to in the to larger Tokyo region. And even 400 years ago, in the Edo period, to Tokyo was the largest city in the world. So it has a very, very dense uh, and uh, large population. And, I mean, the prime ministers and the government, basically, uh, they don't really want to evacuate them because where would they put them? And what would it cost? Uh, so they would just rather say nothing and 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 let people be exposed and uh, deal with the consequences later. But it's uh, it's an impossible situation. It's just completely impossible. So, and the um, the Ministry of Education released two maps on September 29th, which go along with Professor Hayakawa's map. 
And this is the radiation levels in northern Japan uh, from aerial surveys. So these are planes flying overhead measuring the radiation. And again, the whole top third of Japan is contaminated. And um, the uh, cesium deposition, cesium-134 and cesium-137 deposition on the ground is uh, it's, it's just horrendous. Uh, cesium attaches to muscle and so this is a main uh, mechanism for heart damage. It kills the heart cells, the cells in the heart. And the heart only replaces 1% of the cells a year. So an awful lot of babies and toddlers and infants are just going to drop dead. Uh, a low level of cesium exposure internally in a baby or a, a small child um, very quickly kills 25% of the heart cells. The, the, it, the baby can't survive. Okay. So uh, these are the, the kinds of acute things that are, that are happening very rapidly over there. And uh, people are already dying of leukemia and just dropping dead. Uh, some young people went in in their 30s to rescue people's pets who had been evacuated from the uh, exclusion zone. And those three or four of them have been reported to be dead already. Uh, one young man, about 34, went in to retrieve people's cars who were evacuated and uh, staying in, in shelters. So um, they're not even people who live there. They just went to uh, a few times to rescue animals or to retrieve cars. That's how acute it is. And a young woman, uh, Keiko Ichikawa, she's the author of a blog, A Letter from Fukushima. Uh, she's a maternal health care worker. And there's a clip of her about an, a minute and 41 seconds with English subtitles called Severely Malformed Babies Have Been Killed in Japan. And she is speaking at the Odawara Conference on the Fukushima disaster just a month ago, August 21st, in Fukushima Prefecture. And she said that there are hardly any deformed children seen in Japan. And she said she talked to doctors and they told her it's because they killed them at birth. And when the mother wants to see the dead baby, uh, the doctors will not allow the mothers to see the dead, deformed baby. They just tell the mother that the baby died uh, during birth. So um, I'm sure that's happened in the United States and other countries as well. But but is this is this deformed children since Fukushima, or is this just? part of a general practice in Japan. It's a general practice uh, because it's only been six months since the um, since the the disaster and the greatest damage occurs in the first month after conception when a woman hardly even knows she's pregnant. I see. And in, in mouse studies, this is uh, uh, exposing pregnant mice to low levels of radiation, it causes the death of 80% of the embryos. And that has to be just as high in, in humans as well, because we have the same hormones and estrogen and, and um, our biological systems. That's why they do animal studies to, um, to decide whether drugs or whatever are okay for people to, to take. And um, and so if the embryo makes it through that first eight weeks, four to eight weeks, um, and it survives the first three months, there is continued damage um, to that embryo as it develops into uh, um, a fetus. And those babies that survive that period uh, are born and they're just simply monsters. Uh, it's cruel to keep them alive actually because they have no chance at a decent life or uh, life quality and it's a terrible burden on the parents and on society.